The fertility clinic was only 30 minutes away from our house. But getting there took almost three months. Three months of swaying between, do we really need to go and we have to do something. Ranjit and I had been married for three years and we had not been able to conceive on our own. When I walked into that clinic finally, I was brimming with optimism. Because I expected fertility medicine to be a quick, easy and straightforward affair. Something along the lines of, take a pill, get pregnant, give birth to a baby. I believed that success was inevitable. But four years rolled by and the baby was nowhere in sight. My name is Rohini and I'm not here to talk about my journey to motherhood. To share advice on when to start trying, what treatments to consider, whom to consult. In fact, I'm here to do quite the opposite. To suggest ways to think about when to stop, when to call off fertility treatment, when to move forward. I wrote a book that talks about my emotional and medical battle with infertility. I went through a series of infertility treatments. Four IUIs, two IVFs, two frozen embryo transfers, suffered two miscarriages, all adding up to five years of pain, loss and suffering, before giving birth to my son as a result of an IVF cycle. What I learned is that, despite the advancement in medicine, the multiplicity of choices, the sincerity of your own intentions and desires. Fertility medicine is not a perfect science. In India, the success rate per IVF cycle is 30 to 35%. And that means a significant percentage of us will not have our baby through assisted reproduction. It was a difficult realization to embrace. The idea that fertility treatments offer no guarantee of success. In the weeks after a brutal second miscarriage, Ranjit and I sat down to think about our next steps. We had our last two embryos left in the IVF lab. Right at the beginning, we had promised each other to stick it out for three cycles, but assuming that it wouldn't take so long. Now, after all the failed attempts, we knew that it could potentially take much longer or that it might never happen. So one day, while sipping our morning tea, I asked Ranjit, how much further we could go? Should we start thinking beyond three cycles? As my husband does sometimes in such situations, he passed the ball back to me. He said, you decide, it's your call. Well, I did not know what to decide and how to decide. In my mind, there were many reasons to keep going. I was only 32, no significant health issues. We had completed only two IVF cycles so far. It's recommended that couples plan for three or four because the likelihood of achieving a birth is highest at this point. I believed in the magical powers of IVF. With IVF, I had hope. Without IVF, I had nothing. So despite all the hardships of treatment, it was tempting to keep on trying, to think that the next turn would bring a change of luck. I yearned deeply to experience pregnancy and childbirth, watch my belly expand, bask in the special attention from family and friends, go through the trials of labor. In a culture that glorifies competition and winning, that says, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, I was determined to persevere, to not give up. I clung to this fantasy that a baby, only a baby could make my life complete. And the baby was a missing tile in the puzzle, and the minute I found her, I would walk into this happily ever after sunset. On the flip side, there were many reasons to stop as well. IUIs and IVFs are lengthy, invasive and all-consuming. Once the cycle of treatment began, it was like someone had walked into my brain and turned off a switch. The lights went out and darkness descended. I obsessed over each step, the growth of my follicles, the thickness of my lining, the number of eggs retrieved, the number of embryos fertilized. With the everyday anxiety, there was the overarching anxiety about the outcome of the treatment. Will this work? Will I get pregnant this time? A single IVF month meant 
four ultrasounds, four rounds of blood tests, one round of general anesthesia, 50 injections, and up to 400 pills. It annihilated my physical, emotional, and mental well-being. I had to make adjustments in my career to accommodate the rigorous schedule of treatment. I moved from a demanding corporate job to a more flexible work profile in an NGO. I moved from being a full-time employee to a consultant so that I could take more days off, work fewer hours, work from home. Each cycle of treatment cost us anything between 1.5 to 2 lakh rupees. And while we were fortunate that we could afford it, it did put a strain on our financial health. I kept thinking of all the wonderful things we could have done, the holidays perhaps we could have taken if we didn't have this cross to bear. It felt terrible to have to justify my wants and desires, to prove their legitimacy. But given the cards we had been dealt with, we had to take a call. Should we go further, should we stop? One in every six couples in urban India attempting reproduction experiences infertility. There are many of us here who are considering fertility treatment right now. There are others who are neck deep in it. And the question of how much more, how much longer, is a very real and common dilemma facing couples. Unfortunately, there is no fail-proof risk analysis framework to answer such an intimate and subjective question. Yet, there are some ways to think about it. At least, these are the questions we asked ourselves. At first, a stock taking. What is our age? Current state of reproductive health? Response to treatment so far? And what are the odds of fertility success given these variables? What is the toll of infertility on our physical health? How are we coping with the side effects of injections and grueling procedures? What is the toll on our emotional and mental well-being? How are we coping with the uncertainty, stress and pain? What is the toll of these expensive procedures on our financial stability? Are we able to hold on to other aspects of our life while accommodating treatment? Aspects like career, interpersonal relationships, self-care, entertainment, what kind of support do we have from partner, family, friends? Marriages do fall apart because of the pressures of infertility and its treatment. Later, some deeper and more soul-searching kind of questions. What does being a parent mean to us? And in what ways do we want to be a parent? A biological parent, an adoptive parent, a parent through surrogacy, a pet parent, what kind of life do we envision for ourselves beyond family and children? What brings us joy and satisfaction? What is our sense of self, identity, beyond the roles of daughter, wife, mother, son, husband, father? What does our instinct or intuition tell us? At the bottom of our heart, what do we believe? The answers to these questions will vary from person to person and the stop line itself will be different. It could be a time, an age, a number of attempts. But it will have to be a choice that makes you feel most true to yourself and to your life goals. Despite our expert ball passing, Ranjit and I managed to come to a decision jointly. We decided that it would be three IVF cycles and no more. If at this point we did not have a baby, we would call off treatment and look beyond or look elsewhere. Three IVF cycles, that would be our stop line. This number gave us the confidence that we had tried everything we could. It put a ceiling on the amount of time and resources we could invest and the amount of heartbreak we could endure. It gave us the permission to seek fulfillment in other ways. Without feeling that we had failed or that we had been defeated by cruel and unfair circumstances. We had opted in and we could opt out at a time and circumstance of our choosing. And that would be an informed and empowered choice. Just like the decision to seek treatment is not an easy one, the decision to stop it may not be either. Apart from your own feelings of grief, anger, guilt, 
you may have to deal with the takes of others watching from outside. There might be pity, accusation, why quit so soon? Advice, have you tried this clinic, that doctor, this temple, that church, this mosque, that prophet, this magic potion? And even if you don't have to deal with any of the above, you yourself might feel regret years later. One more attempt, one last try. Would our story have turned out differently? Like for most things in life, there is no way to know in advance. Defining your stop line and your happiness are deeply personal and constantly evolving choices. I can only propose that you reflect on them proactively. To prioritize your wellness, to uphold your dignity, to honor what gives you a sense of purpose and fulfillment. It's okay to make that one more attempt, just like it's perfectly okay to stop. Thank you.